I grant you a night to remember. As I sat in the gallery, brush in hand, my mind drifted back to the whirlwind of events that had unfolded over the past month. The canvas before me seemed to fade away as I replayed the memories, each one representing an unexpected event in my summer art journey. The sound of familiar footsteps drew my attention, and I looked up to see Adriana approaching with a vibrant painting in hand. Hi, honey, she greeted, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Working on another piece for your upcoming exhibit, I see. I responded with a half-hearted smile, secretly wondering if she had another adventure in store for me. So, honey, Adriana continued, how would you like to show some of your work tonight? Tonight? You mean here at the gallery? She shook her head. No, at a nightclub in the city. My friend works for an organization that hosts pop-ups in various locations, and tonight she's doing one at a nightclub. At first, the idea of showcasing my art in a nightclub seemed unconventional, but the more I thought about it, the more intrigued I became. A pre-exhibit run of sorts, I said. Exactly, Adriana says. So are you interested? Without hesitation, I nodded. Yes, that sounds great. Andriana beamed, quickly providing me with the details, the time, location, and the person to ask for upon arrival. With one of my smaller pieces in hand, I made my way to the nightclub. Navigating the long line at the entrance, approaching the bouncer, I introduced myself and was promptly ushered inside. Ascending a set of stairs into a vast dimly lit space, a few artists stood beside their works, and a woman whom I found out to be Andriana's friend greeted me warmly. Anything I can help you with, sweetheart? She asked. No, I said, as I was delighted to learn that she had placed me in a prime location, next to the main second floor bar with a panoramic view of the club. As the music started and the crowds began to flow in, I hung my piece on the wall, anticipating the evening's events. The conversations that followed were intriguing, each person offering a unique perspective on my work. Just as I thought the night was winding down, a captivating figure caught my eye. He moved through the crowd with a fluid-like grace, his body language communicating charisma. Stopping before my painting, he studied it internally, as if deciphering a hidden message. Then turning his gaze to me, he pointed and uttered a single word, You? I nodded, and he responded with his eyes returning to the canvas. Right on, man, right on, he said, his voice carrying a weight that contrasts his youthful appearance. Introducing himself as Bashir, the eccentric stranger engaged me in a brief discussion about my art journey, his eyes flickering with a hint of amusement as I mentioned my internship at Gallery. So, you're trying to make it in the art game, huh? He said with a grin. Yes, trying, I replied, unsure of where this conversation was leading. Without hesitation, Bashir pulled out a checkbook and proceeded to purchase my painting on the spot. I was left speechless, my mind racing with a mixture of disbelief and gratitude. As Bashir made arrangements for the painting's transfer, he casually invited me to attend another art event happening nearby, a charity auction. I agreed, eager to see what the other adventures the night had in store. Why not, I said, and with that, we agreed to meet outside the club in 15 minutes. As I made my way outside the club, a striking piece of art caught my eye, drawing me in like a moth to a flame. The facial expression of the figure in the painting was mesmerizing, a complex blend of joy and sorrow that seemed to resonate with something deep within me. Suddenly, I jumped, startled as a figure appeared beside me. Thoughts? The stranger asked. Oh, um... Yeah, I stammered, still captivated by the artwork. It's powerful how the figure is laughing with such unstrained joy, even while the world around them seems to be crumbling. Yeah, he replied, his gaze fixed on the painting. How about yourself, I asked, intrigued by his potential perspective. He hesitated as if searching for the right words. I think the artist is tired. Tired, I echoed, my brow raising as I looked back at the painting. Yeah, he continued, his voice thoughtful, tired of waiting for the end, tired of pretending to understand everyone around them, feeling isolated in a crowded society. It's like the artist hoped to find something more, but now seems to be searching for echoes of the past to illuminate the path forward. His insight struck a chord within me, leaving me momentarily speechless. 
Wow, that's really profound. What makes you think that? I said. A grin spread across his face and he lowered his gaze, as if contemplating his own thoughts. Just then, a voice rang out, shattering the moment. Fernando! The man turned, waving before turning back and saying, Good chatting with you. Enjoy the rest of the show. With that, he walked away, leaving me in a swirl of curiosity and wonder about this unexpected encounter. I returned my gaze to the painting, my mind racing. As I glanced down to the right, I noticed the artist's name. Fernand Wait. I snapped my head up, searching for the man. But he had vanished into the crowd. I continued on making my way outside the club to meet up with Bashir. As we strolled towards Newberry Street, Bashir and I engaged in a lively conversation about the art world and its inner workings. Bashir began asking me various questions. Which art school I attended? If I had a studio? What was my niche? What story was I selling? After answering most of his questions with, I don't know, or I don't have, he responded with a chuckle. Guess that means you don't have funding. I explained that I bust tables at a restaurant in the city, which he responded, a true starving artist, followed by a laugh. He then asked, how many grants had I filled out this past year? Grants? For college, I asked, confused. No, man, he replied. Art grants. You don't make money in this game selling art. You make money applying for grants. Bashir went on to shatter every glass window I had regarding the art world. He explained that it was a pay-to-play environment where the elite take the pie and leave a slice for the rest of us to fight over. Galleries and events would take high percentages, submission, and membership fees while still making no money. Schools were used as a badge to signal which individual should be allowed entry into the controlled funds. What about technique and skill, I asked. Doesn't that account for anything? He laughed. Man, it doesn't matter what you do, as long as you have a piece of paper with the right school on it, a repeated niche, and some connections. You can be the next Picasso, but if you're not shaking the right hands, nobody will look at you twice. Bashir continued explaining more about what it really takes to be a successful artist until we arrived at a brick stable building off Newberry Street. The front entrance had a valet in security with a doorman as we entered. From there, we were greeted by the front desk welcoming Bashir back to the club. After signing in, I was told that photography was not permitted within the building and that if any photos were taken, I would be escorted out immediately. Bashir put his hand on my shoulder and said, come on. The show is on the third floor. As we entered more into the building, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. This place looked like a club, gallery, and museum combined into one. I would never have guessed a place like this existed in Boston. They had open bars, game and lounge rooms, art everywhere, from historic to contemporary. What is this place, I asked Bashir. He replied, this is what's behind the institutional wall, my friend. We headed up to the third floor to a themed fundraiser party. I was definitely out of place, but reassured that everything would be a good, as everyone appeared to know Bashir. There was live music, cigar rollers, Brazilian dancers, art on easels and walls numbered for the silent auction, catering staff walking around offering free drinks and food. I felt like I was in a movie, standing near a window looking at the city lit up at night. I thought, wow, did I just make it? Then I looked down to the street and noticed a homeless person picking through a public trash barrel, and suddenly felt strange to my core. Bashir came up behind me, slapping his hand on my shoulder, shouting, So, you having a good time? Yes, I responded. This event is like nothing I've ever been to. It's something, that's for sure, Bashir responded. So, I asked, this charity must do very well financially. Bashir chuckled and responded, This charity doesn't make any money, and that's the point. I didn't understand, so I asked, What do you mean? Bashir continued, Charities like this are formed to host parties funded by grants and sponsors. While the owners get paid, they boost their own image and offer networking opportunities for those willing to pay. At the end of the day, it's a tax write-off and everyone looks like a hero. Willing to pay, I asked? Yes, he responded. Tickets to entry for an event like this start at $500 a head. I was shocked. They also offer their own grants but to a select few who may or may not also be within their network. Paid to play, he said while sipping his champagne. So, I can get a grant from this charity, I asked. He laughed. Probably not, he said. You don't have the right credentials to qualify. 
But if you show up enough times, sell a part of your soul, then you might be allowed a grant from a place like this. Then, when that door opens, others could follow. But in return, they'll all want their peace. Trying to read between the lines, I just sipped my drink in one hand and ate avocado shrimp with the other. The night came to an end and I walked back home alone, stopping by the gallery staring at it from across the street, thinking about the first day I walked into that gallery. This summer was halfway through and my first exhibit was just around the corner. That should be my main focus for now, I thought. Everything else? Well, I'll leave that for tomorrow.